Accelerating the Path to an HIV-Free Future, Collaboration and Innovation in HIV Vaccine Research and Development. That's the theme under which a conference took place today in Johannesburg. The conference aimed at encouraging collaboration and development of HIV vaccine research. To speak to us more about this, I'm joined by Professor Tumbi Ndungu from the African Health Research Institute. Professor, thank you so much for your time this evening. Now, this conference was held about two weeks after we commemorated uh, HIV Vaccine Awareness Day, which is marked annually on the 18th of May. Um, the conference was attended by over 100 participants, I believe, with keynote sessions, uh, plenary sessions and panel discussions. Uh, given the complexity of the research around HIV vaccines, perhaps you can uh, give us uh, some of the key takeouts from this conference that we should be excited about for the future. Well, uh, thank you very much um, for having me on the show. I think the the main purpose of the meeting today was really to bring awareness around the issue of uh, HIV vaccine and to talk to the community about uh, uh, about where we are in terms of uh, HIV vaccine development. Um, we obviously don't have an HIV vaccine. Uh, it's been about 40 years now since HIV was discovered as the cause of um, a new disease that was called AIDS. And although we have had significant progress in terms of developing uh, therapies and other ways of preventing uh, HIV infection, uh, I think there's general agreement that a vaccine would have the biggest impact. And so the meeting today was really just to assess where we are in terms of the progress and the need for us to continue to work together towards an HIV vaccine, uh, because that's the only uh, solution that will, you know, really help us to try and prevent this disease from uh, from spreading. Without putting you on the spot and asking for time frames, if you had to, to guess how far along we are in the process of successfully developing a vaccine, where are we? Um, I'm going to resist the temptation to put a timeline on it uh, because I've done that in the past um, uh, and it didn't quite work out. Um, and uh, this has been a recurring theme. Uh, I think HIV is a, a very complex virus. It's a very difficult virus because of the genetic diversity of the virus. But uh, it's also true that there is a lot of hope and there is a lot of new innovations uh, in uh, developing a vaccine, particularly in the area of trying to induce and uh, neutralizing antibodies, which can completely block HIV infection. Uh, um, and, and block the virus from uh, entering the body. So although it's very difficult to give a timeline, it's um, fair to say that there is a lot of progress, particularly over the past uh, decade, that uh, suggests that we may actually have an HIV vaccine despite the scientific challenges, particularly of the genetic uh, diversity and the complexity of the virus. Mm. At the same time as this vaccine is in development, um, and congratulations to everybody involved on those successes along that pathway or that journey, um, there is also a simultaneous need to already prepare the way for an HIV vaccine pipeline. Uh, we saw so clear, clearly during the COVID-19 pandemic that equitable access to vaccines simply is not where it should be um, in this day and age. So where are we in terms of, of, of doing the groundwork to make sure that Africa is not left behind? Uh, actually, I would like to answer your question in two ways. One is that although we don't have an effective HIV vaccine today, we have a very effective methods of uh, preventing HIV transmission. And these uh, methods include, for example, antiretroviral therapy, which if it is taken, is very, very effective at uh, stopping uh, the virus from replicating in the body. It improves the health of the, of the person living with HIV, but it also prevents transmission. We also have um, other means such as pre-exposure prophylaxis. This is a, a pill that one can buy from the pharmacy and take if they think that they're at risk, and this uh, also prevents HIV infection. So we have tools uh, for preventing HIV, although they are not very, very um, effective. And this is why we need to develop a vaccine. In terms of access, we must make sure that we work towards uh, ensuring that there is access if, in fact, we do develop a successful HIV vaccine. And that means that governments, uh, communities uh, must come together and start chatting the wave right now about how 
uh, we would roll out an HIV vaccine if it was to be uh, um, to be uh, 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 developed. The last thing that we want is a vaccine that is developed for which there is skepticism, for which there is conspiracy theories about, and for which uh, people are not able to get access to. So governments, communities need to get together. And that, this, this was one of the topics that we discussed today about ensuring and advocating to ensure that if an HIV vaccine is developed that is successful in preventing infection, that indeed uh, the communities that are affected and impacted by this disease can get it. Talk to, us, talk to us a little bit about the South African and African uh, research community. We know we have so many incredible uh, medical and scientific professionals who are working daily uh, to make these medical advancements. Um, talk to us a little bit about the voices in Africa who are championing the fight against uh, HIV and AIDS and for an HIV vaccine. Um, I think Africa has played its role uh, very effectively in the development of an HIV vaccine. Um, there are uh, co cohorts of people living with HIV that have been developed by African scientists. African scientists have contributed to uh, the development of, uh, for example, uh, broadly neutralizing antibodies, which are now at the forefront of HIV vaccine research, and for which scientists are thinking that if they can find a way to induce these broadly neutralizing antibodies, that would... Uh, would uh, lead to an effective HIV vaccine. Uh, African scientists have also been at the forefront of clinical trials uh, of vaccines, even though a lot of these uh, trials have been negative. I, I think that we also need to talk about uh, the next generation of African scientists. I think one of the things that Africa can do for itself, knowing that Africa hasn't, uh, in the past, uh, been involved particularly in discovery and innovation research, is to make sure that we develop the next generation of African scientists so that these scientists, the new breed of scientists, the next generation of scientists can be in a position to make vaccines and drugs for themselves on the African continent so that we don't find ourselves in the same situation that we found ourselves when we had the COVID, uh, COVID vaccine where it was developed by others and we became the recipient and we only received it way, way after everybody uh, had received it. So I think for me, developing in particular the next generation of African scientists is, is critically important. And there are many organizations that are doing that, many universities and the organization, uh, a consortium that I lead called the Sub-Saharan African Network for TB and HIV Research Excellence, which operates in seven different African countries, is actually doing exactly that, which is trying to help the next generation of African scientists, equipping them so that they can be the generation that gives us an HIV vaccine. Well, thank you so much uh, for those insights. That was Professor Tumbi Ndungu from the Africa Health Research Institute.